Hello, and welcome back to our walking expedition through Epcot. This week, we're going to be heading into the past to look at the world of motion. So let's head over there. Getting around in our world of motion is what this popular future world attraction is all about. World of Motion was the former tenant of the Transportation Pavilion at Epcot, an opening day attraction in 1982 and sponsored by General Motors. The idea for the pavilion began in 1975, when designs for an Epcot theme park were just beginning. As part of the plans for the new theme park, Imagineers planned on having a transportation pavilion. At a chance meeting between Imagineer Harper Goff and Bill Mitchell, who was General Motors' head of design at a school dedication in 1976, eventually led to the General Motors signing on as the sponsor of the transportation pavilion in the yet unbuilt Epcot Center. Something for everybody. Today we've come to expect, even demand, variety in almost everything that affects the quality of our lives. The history of transportation here at the World of Motion shows how people throughout the ages have searched for and found better ways to get from here to there. General Motors was the very first sponsor to sign up for the park in December 1977, signing a multi-year sponsorship deal for the ride. In a move said to counter Ford, who sponsored a Disney-created attraction at the 1964 World's Fair. The plan was to take guests through how man has travelled throughout the ages. Claude Coates first designed an industrial-style pavilion, but General Motors wanted something a little more light-hearted. Imagine Ed Mark David was assigned to develop the ride. You may recognise his name from being one of the creators of either The Jungle Cruise, Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion and more and was later joined by animator Ward Kimball, who, although at the time was retired, came out of retirement to assist on the creation of World of Motion, and was the only ride that he had ever worked on. At the time, a secondary attraction to be built in the future was also planned. The outside track was to wrap around the building, but this idea was scrapped as plans continued to develop. The design continued to be modified and changed as time went on. The atrium became smaller, but the idea was kept and the planned exterior track was removed, with the majority of the Omnimover attraction being located on the second floor. The building finally evolved into a stainless steel wheel-shaped pavilion at 320 feet wide and 65 feet tall, with a wedge removed where guests would enter. Over 180 animatronic characters would tell a light-hearted, humorous story of transportation, from foot power to the invention of the wheel and the future of transportation. The ride began construction in 1979 with Epcot and opened on time on October 1st, 1982. The ride contained the greatest number of audio animatronic figures in Future World and contained 30 scenes spanning different ages of transportation. Throughout the ride, different versions of the iconic theme song It's Fun To Be Free could be heard, with the music changing to reflect the different time periods throughout the scenes. The song was written by Ex Atencio, who also wrote Yo Ho! A Pirate's Life For Me from Pirates of the Caribbean and the famous Grim Grinning Ghost from The Haunted Mansion. The other writer for the song was Buddy Baker, another legendary Disney composer who among many things composed the score for the Fox and Hound movie, as well as the medley in the French Pavilion's movie. Many scenes throughout the ride included gags, which would not be mentioned in the narration of the ride. The ride would be narrated by Gary Owens, Welcome to the wonderful world of motion. Guests would board two benched black Omnimover vehicles that could hold up to six passengers. The vehicles would then go outside into the open entrance of the pavilion and spiral up a ramp offering a nice view of Spaceship Earth on the way up, re-entering the pavilion on the upper main ride level. The very first scene entered a cave to witness a group of cave people blowing on their feet to cool them down after they had used them as a mode of transportation. The second scene, Gary Owens would tell us Our first safe highway, water. Showing people travelling by raft. Moving on On land, our animal friends give us new freedom and we test drive many new models. Various animals are shown in the scene, including zebras, ostrich, ox, elephants and a camel trying to be rowed by people. Next up, we see the invention of the wheel. A gag showed men holding a square, 
triangle and circle objects and voting which one would be better. Past this, projections of wheeled vehicles are seen, including different types of chariots, including a discounted Roman chariot. Gary Owens next tells us, With proud new ships, we sail forth in search of new worlds, undaunted by age-old myths and silly superstitions. A large projected map is shown, with ships being blown across the Atlantic, before they are blown clear off the edge of the world and a sailor looking through a telescope with a sea serpent looking back at him. Before we enter the, the age of the Renaissance, great minds are turning from works of art to flights of fancy. Leonardo da Vinci attempts to fly while an upset Mona Lisa stands nearby, and a man looks over London in a hot air balloon and gets caught up in a clothesline. Steam power is next, as a steam-powered stagecoach is blocked on a bridge by a bull. From hot air to the power of steam, now nothing stands in the way of progress on the open road. We see that another kind of horse arrives, a steam-powered horse, showing a steam train being held up by a gang of outlaws. Next up we move on to bicycles and automobiles. What more romantic way to enjoy it than with that infallible combination of man and machine, the bicycle. Showing people riding bikes, including a crash bike in the mud among pigs. The most photographed and iconic scene in the ride include the world's first traffic jam, followed by various scenes of aeroplanes. Now the sky's the limit. Entering the final section into the speed tunnel, a full wraparound projection surrounds the vehicles. Scenery flies by making it seem as if we are zooming down a country road, speeding through a swamp and more. To help make the illusion of speed, hidden fans blew air onto the vehicles and lights fly past making it seem like you are moving faster and faster. This technology was essentially way ahead of its time, as not one but two rides at Universal Orlando, recently or soon to open, using an updated technology very similar to this. After this around 15 minute journey you would end up in the center core, the 60 foot high core of the pavilion. In the vast dark room, the city of the future is seen. Before we descend back to the lower levels of the pavilion, a Pepper's Ghost style effect similar to Haunted Mansion was used to show riders in futuristic bubble cars of tomorrow. As you prepare to unload, we hear. Ladies and gentlemen, General Motors now invites you to share the challenge of the future. We need you to help us shape tomorrow's mobility. Just ahead is General Motors' exciting Tram Center. Join us behind the scenes, where we are working to ensure that tomorrow's world will continue to be a world of motion. After exiting the ride, you went into the trans center, full of exhibits and showed about transportations and everything surrounding it. Similar to how Interventions and Communicore felt, it was designed by Bob Rogers and his design team, offered educational attractions and prototype cars, including the lean machine in the Dreamers Workshop. Other exhibits included Aerotest, where guests could design a car that would be more efficient in a virtual wind tunnel, similar to creating a car for testing in Test Track today. Bird and the Robot was a humorous audio animatronic show with a car manufacturing arm named Tiger and his manager, Bird. Bird was trying to get Tiger into show business and has the robot perform many different tricks. The Water Engine Theater housed an animated film about the different types of engines, and was presented on multiple video screens. Each one had a character arguing which type of engine was the best. Lastly, on your way to the exit, you would pass through Concept to Reality. Similar to how today you would walk through current GM cars and trucks and be able to get in and out of them, with a GM representative nearby. During its lifetime, the pavilion would remain mostly unchanged other than minor maintenance. In 1992, the sponsorship deal was ending for World of Motion, and with business slowing, GM were hesitant to re-sign sponsorship. Eventually, they agreed to re-sign in a one-year contract for the ride, with GM wanting the attraction to be refurbished. Instead of refurbishment, Disney and GM decided it would take World of Motion, close it down, and instead of refurbish it, build a brand new ride that focused only on cars. On the final ride of World of Motion on January 2nd, 1996, the ride broke down and GM executives had to climb out and walk back to the entrance. After closing, some of the old animatronics for the ride could be seen in the queue line for the Backlot Tour at Hollywood Studios. The replacement for World of Motion was to be called Test Track, and was planned to open two years later in 1998, but things didn't exactly go to plan. 
Thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it please do like and subscribe. Check back next time to join us on our expedition Epcot where we will be continuing our history of World of Motion with a look back at Test Track 1.0 and Test Track 2.0. See you next time!